He got really rattled because just before we sat down for the interview, Nigel Farage had sent him a three-page dossier of all the most critical things I'd said about Trump in the previous year. And it was pretty <laughs> savage stuff. I'd really wow. gone after him about coronavirus, about uh, the refusal to accept the election, about the riots at the Capitol that followed. And I'd called him all sorts of things. The Trump called me up to his office before we started. And he's fuming and he's swearing and effing and blah. And he's looked at me and he goes... He starts reading out these lies one by one slowly, right? And then peering over the thing going, you called me a mob boss, a gangster, a narcissist, a monster. Trump should be removed from office immediately. He went, how could you do this to me? I was like, this is really not the best preparation for an interview. Uh, I'm anyway. actually just wondering which one it was you took umbrage to. Well, exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, I eventually thought, how do I play this? So I, I, I can't grovel to him, it's just pointless. So I said, look, you did not make me your celebrity apprentice because I sat on the fence or was a shrinking violet, right? I, I su supported you sometimes when nobody else did, and I've been hammered for it, and I've criticised you harshly when I've disagreed with you. And he looked at me, he was trying to work out how yeah. this played for him. And then I had an absolute brainwave. I went, and I want to talk about some positive things. He went, well, like what? I went, like you're holding one last week, because he had a holding one playing with Ernie Else. And I suddenly thought, well, that's inspired. And he went, oh, it was a great shot. I went, <laughs> I went Ernie said apparently, like, five iron into the wind, couple of bounces in the hole. He went, yeah, I just nailed it, absolutely. <laughs> and he starts telling the story. And I went, was that your first one? He went, no, I've had seven. I was like, really? You've had seven holes in one? Anyway, it was very funny. And then he sort of moved slightly lightened. So he went, all right, I'll do the interview. So he comes down. And then I first I get 20 minutes. I managed to get 75. Uh, and some of the fractiousness is because I keep asking more questions. And his aide keeps jumping in. It was this spineless little twerp. I kept jumping in going, that's enough, enough, enough. And eventually I went, but Mr. Mr. Trump, we haven't talked about your hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> so then he had to sit down again and talk about the hole in one. So it's all very. Uh, but he get he, the, the stuff where he blows his top is really about, and it is at the core of the whole thing with Trump. He just cannot accept he lost the election. He believes it was stolen and rigged. I said to him to his face, by whom? Uh, he thinks it was voter fraud, that there was a fraudulent system. None of it's been proven. There is no hard evidence of any fraud. I told him that to his face, but he doesn't want to hear it. And he doesn't want to hear it from someone he considers to be a friend. And he said, then you're not real. Okay, so you're not real. I was like, I am real. I'm sitting here and I'm doing the interview. And he, he wouldn't accept it. And he kept calling me a fool. And then eventually he just goes, turn the cameras off. He, the interview had finished by then. But he says, turn the cameras off. And as he goes off, you hear him so dishonest. And I'm like, <laughs> really? Because I believe something not to be true, which is just not true. That makes me dishonest. So it was a it was a crazy encounter. Mm. Afterwards, I was like, I was like, I, it was very hot. It was in Florida. It was like eighty degrees. We were both like sweating. I was like, I felt like I'd just been in the ring with Tyson Fury. It was like you know all sorts of stuff going down. But it's, it's a it's a brilliant interview. I've got to ask because you've had a little bit of time away from TV. You've been doing bits and bobs in that mm. time. Have you missed it? Oh yeah, yeah. Because TV is really about showing off. It's like doing Instagram on telly, mm. isn't it? It's, it's basically about showing off. And I love to be centre stage. I love to express opinions. I love debate. I love arguing. I love all that. But the central point of the show is that we, we're in a weird place in society now where you can get cancelled for having an opinion. And by cancel, you could just be destroyed. You know, a mob will come for you online. They'll abuse you. They'll shame you. We all know this. Everyone in broadcasting. So on eggshells, right? Be careful what you say. Why? Mm. Why should you be careful what you say? I don't tune in to listen to you, Ali, or to you, or anyone, to, to, to listen to this, right? Why would you want to be careful what you say? Say what you think. So, how do we get back to the good old days, or is it actually going to get worse? I think you watch Piers Morgan Uncensored every night, because actually the core of the show is to cancel cancel culture. I don't come at this from left or right. Uh, I want to have people from all sides of these debates to come on. I, some I agree with, some I want to vehemently disagree with me. And out of it, I want to be able to have fun as well, have a laugh, go and have a pint with people like we used to. You know, when I was young, I used to be thrown out of my country pub every, at least every two weeks for, for arguing too loudly on a Friday night. And the landlady, Mary, would go, can you get out, come back? And I go back the next day, grovel, do a bit of bartending, and I was back in. But it was always, it was just me being me. I'm no different on or off camera. You know, if you meet me in a pub, I'm exactly the same as I was on Good Morning Britain. And I think that's how people should be. You should just be true to yourself. But we are now in a weird place where people just feel too frightened to express what they genuinely think about things. Where did it come from? And you, parents, where did He's I asking what happened to you as a child, Piers, for you oh, to I be said, like this. Well, I come from a very opinionated family. So my grandmother was 
a fantastically opinionated, brilliant character. My mum, very opinionated. I mean, most of my siblings make me look like a tricky, tricky violet. When we get together and have dinner, it's like it's mayhem. Uh, I'm the quietest, most tolerant person sitting there. Um, but no, we we were always encouraged to speak our minds, and we always used to have massive tear ups, and then it would all be forgiven, and we get on with. with a, that's the culture I grew up in. You know, I went to a local comprehensive school when I was thirteen. Um, my mates all went to that same school. Whenever we meet up, we always argue really, you know, sometimes it's like really full on about issues that are in the news, but from Brexit to Trump to vegan sausage rolls. Uh, but at the end of it, we go and have a bottle of wine or a few pints and a laugh. That's what democracy is supposed to be. Mm. I did notice as well that you bought everybody in the building breakfast this morning, which was amazing, and it was sausage or bacon and there were no vegan options. No vegan options, and also if you've got a coffee in the building today, you've got my head on the froth, which I think is about as, <laughs> about as hot as it gets if you're a public oh figure. Oh, goodness me. So you can actually drink me. <laughs> Tonight, 8 o'clock, Tom TV, Piers Morgan Uncensored, the Trump interview you've all been hearing about. It is great telly. Really oh looking forward to it. 526 on Sky, it's on Freeview, it's free site, you can get it on your app, you can get it on YouTube, it's going to be a biggie. Looking forward to it. Piers, thank you so much. Thanks for having Enjoy me. the rest of your day. Thank you for breakfast as well. Well, thank you. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.